Hello, my name is Nigel Thorne, I'm from Wales, and I have concerns about the Welsh Government's Relationships and Sexuality Education Code, a document that has been heavily influenced by queer theory. The code was created by Professor Emma Reynolds, an academic from Cardiff University, and relies heavily on the work of American academic Judith Butler. Queer theory is a radical departure from traditional teaching. Traditional teaching focuses on imparting knowledge. The goal of queer theory in schools is to change children's perceptions. As Kerry Black, co-founder of LGB Alliance Ireland, writes, The central concept of queer theory is that Western thought is based on binaries, such as dark, light, black, white, men, women, adult, child, straight, gay, civilised, barbarian, sun, moon, and so on. Material reality is not the basis of this style of thinking. Rather, the workings of language are regarded as in and of themselves, the building blocks of thought, the bricks, with which all theory and praxis must be done. There is no way to get beyond language, or as Derrida said, there's nothing outside the text. Any attempt to get beyond the text must be, in and of itself, a linguistic attempt. Words is all we have. You might queer sex and gender by highlighting the experiences of people who do not experience their gender in ways that fall within the binary categories of male and female. You might queer it by talking about cultures where non-standard definitions of gender are culturally accepted. Two-spirit, fa'afafin, non-binary people. And you might queer sex by allowing gender to proliferate. If there are 74 genders, or however many there are this week, then talking about binary gender is obviously insane. In the final analysis, there's no escape from language in queer theory. There's no escape from binaries or from power. Creating new discourses of power and new binaries is not regarded as a bug of queer theory. It is a feature of all language. Meanwhile, material reality continues to exist. In her book, Gender Trouble, Judith Butler discusses the heterosexual matrix, the perception that to be normal, boys must be masculine and sexually attracted to girls, and girls must be feminine and sexually attracted to boys. Butler quotes French philosopher Monique Wittig. The naming of sex is an act of domination and compulsion. The category of sex is a name that enslaves. The straight mind, evident in the discourses of the human sciences, oppress all of us, lesbians, women, and homosexual men. To undermine this matrix, Butler proposes the queering of the gender binary by the dissemination of teaching that downplays the significance of sex and elevates the significance of a personal gender. Now, such an idea is novel. In the Oxford English Dictionary, there are two definitions of gender that relate to humans. One is a biological definition. Gender is a synonym for sex. The other is a sociological definition. Gender is the social expectations of the roles and behaviours of someone based on their sex. Queer theory adds this third definition, a psychological definition. Gender is what you perform, and your gender identity is created as a result of performing that gender. We act as if that being of a man or that being of a woman is actually an internal reality or something that's simply true about us, a fact about us. Actually, it's a phenomenon that's being produced all the time and reproduced all the time. So to say gender is performative is to say that nobody really is a gender from the start. I know it's controversial, but, but that's, that's my claim. Butler believes that this definition gives people agency to allow them to challenge social stereotypes. This definition of gender is referenced in the Designing Your Curriculum page for Welsh Schools on the HUB website, 
where examples of such personal genders are the identities of male, female, and non-binary. This definition undermines the definition where gender is a synonym for sex, and indeed, supporting documents indicate that gender should no longer be regarded as a synonym for sex in the teaching of children. This is the only place in the code and guidance where the words male and female are used, as examples not of sex categories, but gender identities. The code references the word gender 17 times. Queer theory is 21st century sophistry. It has turbocharged an ideological belief that all of us have an innate gender identity that is independent of our biological sex. It is a lie, and belief in this lie appears to be endemic in the Welsh education system. In 2014, the Welsh Government funded the Transform Toolkit, a document produced by Youth Cymru. The toolkit states, Gender exists on a spectrum. Gender does not equal sex. Gender only exists on a spectrum if you use queer theory's psychological definition of gender, and the spectrum must rely on gender stereotypes to provide a frame of reference. The toolkit defines the gender binary as a concept that there are only two genders, male and female. Well, if gender is a synonym for sex, there are only two genders, male and female. The toolkit quotes a pupil at Radha Comprehensive School. Gender is how you feel as a person. The toolkit references the gender unicorn that teaches children that gender identity is independent of biological sex. In 2015, Wrexham Council published their Transgender Guidance for Wrexham Schools. The guidance advises teachers to Consider gender as a spectrum and take a non-binary approach to gender. Gender is often an important part of our identity and developing a positive sense of gender identity is part of growing up. However, gender identity is often complex and there is a spectrum of gender which is wider than just male and female. It implores teachers to Remember that a child or young person who identifies as a trans girl, but was born a genetic male, is not a boy dressed as a girl, but is a girl who outwardly, at this point, resembles a boy. In 2016, the Welsh Government published their action plan to advance equality for trans people. In the plan, it states, Many trans people are now coming out at a younger age. This increases the likelihood that schools and organisations will encounter trans young people or a young person who is a family member who is transgender. There is no reflection as to what coming out as trans actually means, nor why many children and adolescents are identifying as trans at a young age. The plan commits to promoting the Transform Cymru Toolkit to youth organisations. In 2017, the Vale of Glamorgan Council published a Transgender Inclusion Toolkit and Guidance titled The Body We Are Born Into Does Not Define Who We Are. Boys and girls are male or female children who exist in the world. What the title in this context actually means is that having a male body is no restriction to being a girl, in which case girl has been redefined as a child of either sex with a particular personality type. This is not challenging gender stereotypes, it is reinforcing them. The document is approved by Stonewall Cymru. The guidance provides some definitions. 
Cisgender person. A person whose biological sex matches their gender. For example, a female sex person who identifies with their female gender. So, a girl then who identifies with the social stereotypes of what it is to be a girl. The definition of transgender is this. Umbrella terms used to describe people who are transgender, transsexual, transvestite, intersex, both male and female, neither male nor female, androgynous, a third gender, or who have a gender identity which we do not yet have words to describe. Exciting! Kids will know which of these is the cool group to belong to. The document describes two scenarios that could involve transgender pupils. Scenario 1. My daughter doesn't want a boy changing next to her. What if he looks at her body? For example, in this scenario, it would not be appropriate to remove the trans person from the changing rooms if a concern is raised by a parent or carer. In this situation, it would be far more appropriate to look at offering an alternative changing arrangement for the child who feels uncomfortable around the trans person. A human rights response would be to state that, although the individual in question may have the body of a boy, they are, in every other respect, a girl, and, as such, have the right, under the Equality Act, to change with the girls and to be treated fairly as such. It is the responsibility of members of staff to support both trans students and cisgender students to feel comfortable around one another. Scenario 2. It's not fair that he enters the 100 metres race for girls when he is a boy. Or won't she get injured playing rugby with boys? Similarly, pupils or students who feel that a trans child should not be involved in certain sporting activities may themselves need to be supported to do a different activity. This kind of support acknowledges that some individuals may struggle to understand trans people or initially feel uncomfortable around them, but does not support the idea that trans people should be treated any differently to cisgender people. The responsibility lies with the individual who has the problem to deal with that problem, not with the trans person to accommodate that person's insecurity around them, or their child. In approximately 2018, Keridigion Council published their transgender guidance for Keridigion schools. The guidance states, Given the spectrum of trans identities and experiences, it is important that any support you offer a trans child or young person starts with identifying their individual needs. It is important that their identity is validated and supported in any work that you do. In contrast, in the interim report produced by Dr. Hilary Cass, it states that social transition is an active intervention because it may have significant effects on the child or young person in terms of their psychological functioning. The guidance continues. In most cases, trans children or young people should have access to the changing room that corresponds to their gender identity. This approach is underpinned by the Equality Act 2010, whereby refusing a child or young person access to the changing room of their gender identity would constitute an act of discrimination. Refusing a child or young person access to the changing room of their gender identity is an act of discrimination, of course, but it is a lawful one. The Equality Act allows for a service to be limited on the basis of sex if it is a proportionate means of achieving a legitimate aim. A legitimate aim could be for reasons of privacy and decency. In 2019, West Glamorgan's Safeguarding Boards published 
Transgender guidance for schools and other youth settings. The guidance states, For some people it is not appropriate to think of gender identity as being totally female or totally male. They may consider their gender identity to be fluid, partially male and partially female, or they may consider themselves to be ungendered. Some people who consider their gender identity to be fluid may use the term gender queer to describe themselves. They may also use gender neutral pronouns, for example, they or the, or prefer people to not use any pronouns to describe them. It can be difficult to identify as gender queer in a society that is very gendered. In the same year, Rhonda Cannon Taff published a transgender toolkit for secondary schools. The toolkit stated, School staff should not disclose information that may reveal a pupil or student's transgender status or gender non-conforming presentation to others, including parents, carers, and other members of the school community, unless legally required to do so. In 2020, Estin published a document entitled Celebrating Diversity and Promoting Inclusion – Good Practice in Supporting Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual and Transgender LGBT Learners in Schools and Colleges. The document stated, Leaders ensure professional learning for all staff that develops their skills, knowledge and confidence to support LGBT learners and assists in creating an inclusive ethos. Frequently, this involves input from specialist external partners, including providing training for specific staff that allows them to deliver professional learning to colleagues within their own organisation. Estin leave it in no doubt about the specialist external partners it has in mind. In the same year, the organisation Transgender Trend published a review of Stonewall Guidance. The review stated, We have analysed all Stonewall Guidance for schools from 2015 onwards. We looked for evidence of, number one, biological inaccuracies and misinformation likely to confuse children. Two, legal inaccuracies, including information likely to mislead schools. Three, promotion of ideology and reinforcement of sex stereotypes. Four, serious safeguarding concerns. Five, compelled speech and belief. We found that Stonewall guidance eschews biological and scientific facts in favour of a message to children that their inner feelings override their biological sex, and that being a boy or a girl is a matter of personal choice. The guidance presents the idea that everyone is born with an innate internal gender identity as fact, that it is this feeling which defines human beings as either men or women, and that biological sex is merely assigned at birth and may be reassigned at will. Stonewall does not offer any scientific evidence to back this claim. We found legal inaccuracies and information about legal duties which would potentially be misleading for schools, including misinformation and misrepresentation of protected characteristics in the Equality Act 2010, which could confuse schools about the legal rights of different groups. Conflicts of rights, for example, the right of girls to single-sex facilities, are hidden, so schools would be in breach of their public sector equality duty by failing to show due regard if they implemented Stonewall policies without considering the impact on other protected groups. Stonewall guidance fails to inform schools that women and girls, including lesbians, are legally defined and protected as the female sex in the Equality Act 2010 under the protected characteristic of sex. 
Under the banner of LGBT, Stonewall changes the legal meaning of same-sex orientation and extends legal protection to the concept of gender identity. Lesbians have their legal status as same-sex oriented females removed by the redefinition of same-sex attraction as same-gender orientation, allowing men to demand recognition both as women and as lesbians. Stonewall guidance advises schools to adopt affirmation and social transition as the only approach towards children with gender dysphoria without including information that this approach is new and experimental and without including evidence to support their advice. The guidance advises the encouragement of children towards transition and normalizes medical transition. It offers no alternative approach and no alternative explanation of a child's distress or confusion about being a girl or being a boy other than the child is transgender. This means that a boy who thinks he is a girl is told by teachers that he really is a girl. In 2021, I wrote to Jeremy Miles, then newly appointed Education Minister in the Welsh Government. Dear Mr Miles, congratulations on being appointed Minister for Education and the Welsh Language. Uh, our children should be able to live their lives free from bullying and unjustifiable discrimination. Nevertheless, I am concerned by the rapidly growing influence of a gender ideology that asserts that gender identity is something that is innate and untethered from biological sex. This ideology, promoted by several organisations, of whom Stonewall is the most influential, seems to have had a significant influence on government policy, including educational policy. In their guide to supporting LGBT children and young people in schools and colleges, Stonewall write, A trans child may say, I feel like a girl, or I don't feel like a boy, rather than using the word trans. They may come to school wearing clothes not typically associated with their assigned sex. And often a child or young person's words or actions are automatically attributed to their send, special educational needs and disabilities, without considerations of other factors such as their orientation or gender identity. This might include preferences for clothing types or hair length being seen as a sensory need, fear of change at puberty, behaviours described as a new special interest, fascination, curiosity or phase. You may be aware of the Department of Education guidance published last year. The guidance stated, we are aware that topics involving gender and biological sex can be complex and sensitive matters to navigate. You should not reinforce harmful stereotypes, for instance, by suggesting that children might be a different gender based on their personality and interests, or the clothes they prefer to wear. Resources used in teaching about this topic must always be age-appropriate and evidence-based. Materials which suggest that nonconformity to gender stereotypes should be seen as synonymous with having a different gender identity should not be used, and you should not work with external agencies or organisations that produce such material. While teachers should not suggest to a child that their non-compliance with gender stereotypes means that either their personality or their body is wrong and in need of changing, teachers should always seek to treat individual students with sympathy and support. Can I ask you to do two things? Number one, please follow the lead of Department of Education and issue similar guidance for schools in Wales. Two, refrain from referring to transgender children in government documents and elsewhere. I do feel that we're living in a climate of fear when any questioning of the gender identity ideology is met with an accusation of transphobia. It should not be transphobic to ask questions. It is important that we do, particularly when it impacts the psychological well-being of our children. The reply stated, thank you for your email on 16th of May addressed to Jeremy Miles. I've been asked to reply, equality is at the core of what we do at Welsh Government. Diversity will always be celebrated and discrimination has no place in Wales. We want every LGBTQ plus person to feel able and safe to live authentically and openly as themselves. 
Welsh Government strongly advocates the rights of LGBTQ plus people and as such we're developing an action plan to strengthen protections for LGBTQ plus people, promote equality for all and help to coordinate ambitious actions across government and beyond. Will we use the uh, LGBTQ plus action plan as a route to consider and develop national transgender guidance for schools? There will be opportunities for LGBTQ plus people and stakeholders as well as the wider public to share views on the action plan during the public consultation phase later this summer. Your sincerely, Equality Branch Welsh Government. In July that year, uh, the LGBTQ plus action plan was published. The plan stated, The expert panel concluded that rarely is relationships and sexuality education, RSE, LGBTQ plus inclusive and provision is too heteronormative. Fortuitously, there was someone who was a member of both the LGBTQ plus expert panel and the sex and relationships education expert panel who knew how to make RSC less heteronormative. Professor Reynolds had an article published on how to do exactly that some 15 years previously. And so queer theory is to be made a mandatory part of the RSC curriculum. The teaching of this ideology in schools follows the practice in the United States. In her book Irreversible Damage, The Transgender Craze Seducing Our Daughters, journalist Abigail Schreier describes this teaching. This is how gender identity is taught in schools, with the materials, curricula, speakers and teacher training supplied by gender activists. Kindergartners are introduced to the gender-bred person and gender unicorn. Kindergarten teachers read from I Am Jazz, and the little ones are taught that they might have a girl brain in a boy body, or vice versa. Schools that administer this instruction never acknowledge that, as a scientific matter, it's gibberish. Shreya spoke at a conservative college about the transgender craze sweeping the Western world. She could easily have been speaking to people of any political persuasion. Although she described many transgender adults to be wonderful, there is one thing she will not do. I never lie. So I will never say, and will never say, trans women are women. This is a dangerous lie. It's a lie which, when promoted in public, leads to unjust and even dangerous consequences for women and girls. When we lie in public, we usher in all kinds of consequences, the obliteration of women's protective spaces and the destruction of women's and girls' athletics. Rejecting lies, sorry, <laughs> parroting these lies is not mere courtesy whatever proponents say. It's the cowardly surrender of women's welfare as a sacrifice to the woke gods, and it's wrong. In the public sphere, the lie is the harm. It does damage to our ability to communicate, to comprehend each other, and it makes it impossible to object in the face of unfairness and cruelty. If, quote, a trans girl really is just a kind of girl, after all, there is no basis for objecting to a 17-year-old boy who handily beat all the girls on the track team. Now, I'm often asked, why are the trans activists doing this? Why would a teacher tell her class of kindergartners that only they know their true gender? What could possibly be the justification for telling small boys that they might really be girls and telling small girls that they might really be boys? The biggest hint I got to the answer came from talking to detransitioners. Remember, these are young women who underwent transition and then later regretted it. Again and again, they told me that while they were transitioning, they were angry, they were sullen, and they were politically radical. They very often cut off their families. They were coached in this by transgender influencers online. And they rushed toward their new glitter families. 
you'll often see gender-confused people among the ranks of Antifa or at Black Lives Matter rallies. Having turned against their families of origin, they are easy prey for those who recruit revolutionaries. Put another way, the chaos is the point. Just as the point of critical race theory is to turn the American people against one another, so the point of gender ideology is to stop the formation of stable families, the building blocks of American life. Let me say this again, this is not the goal of all transgender adults, but it is the goal of gender ideology and the transgender movement, namely the creation of a new victim class eager to join the revolution. On 14th of December 2021, despite widespread opposition, the Senate approved the Relationships and Sexuality Education Code. In line with the queer theory goal of undermining heteronormativity, it is now mandatory for teachers to teach children that they have a gender as well as a sex, and to hell with the consequences. As Professor Reynolds explains, there is no parental opt-out. Children's rights to RSE is also now protected by ending the parental right to withdrawal. So parents will no longer be able to withdraw their children from RSE, which means that all children will now have the right to participate in this new, holistic, developmentally appropriate RSE. In 2022, a legal challenge was brought against the Welsh Government by five parents, supported by a grassroots group, Public Child Protection Wales. The challenge was unsuccessful. However, the judgment did highlight the response to a consultation exercise undertaken by the Welsh Government in 2019. So determined that the Welsh Government to force queer theory and gender identity ideology teaching into Welsh schools, that they are overriding the opinions of the majority. As Abigail Schreier says, we must fight back. So what do we do about this? How do we push back on the onslaught of gender ideology? First, we must oppose the indoctrination of children in gender ideology. There is absolutely no good reason for it, and it does very real harm. You can absolutely insist that all treat children treat each other kindly without indoctrinating an entire generation in gender confusion. Second, in public, we must speak up and we must speak the truth. Always, wherever we find ourselves, at work, whatever we do, we must refuse to recite the lies. If conservatives are to confront these issues, we know we must know something about them. We must overcome our squeamishness. We must clearly distinguish, for instance, between transgender Americans, many of whom are wonderful, and an ideological movement which seeks to warp our children and wreck our families. This is a movement that would turn our children against themselves because its advocates know there is no greater harm, there is no greater horror to a parent. There is no quicker way to bring America to its knees than by prompting our children to do irreversible damage to themselves. The people who've been pushing this ideology, they got a big head start on us, perhaps by a decade. But they have awakened a sleeping giant. The success of my book, the fact that I was invited to speak to you today, and the state legislators that are now debating these issues testify that a cultural battle is at last being fought. We cannot afford to lose. These are our kids and grandkids. Our future literally depends on our winning this. Thank you. Public Child Protection Wales are appealing the judicial review judgment. Those who prefer that their children weren't indoctrinated into queer theory may wish to support them. 